Well hi, it's Cliff here, a toolmaker from New Zealand. You may have seen my recent video where I broke a tiny tap, an 832 or 4 millimeter approximately, tap into this bit of steel, and then developed a way of grinding cutters, a special type of tungsten carbide cutter, that could machine the broken piece out, and that went really well. Have a look at that video if you haven't seen it already. Anyway, I wanted to take it a step further and use this new <clears throat> cutter technology that I've been developing, well at least, at least it's new to me anyway, um, to see if I could use it to machine a hardened file. This is a hardened high quality 4mm file and I just used this tiny little cutter technology that I've been working on to machine a hole right through the file. And that was slightly more challenging than machining the tap. I think the file, if anything, is harder than the tap, but it went really well. And I want to share this detailed information with you, how you can do this in the low budget home shop with cheap equipment and uh, just so useful. I wish I'd known about these details many years ago and I want to share it with you guys around the world. You might have seen in my recent video how to remove a broken tap. I machined out the other half of this approximately four millimeter size uh, broken tap, which I've just dropped. Um, and I explained there how to make a little cutter, how to grind a cutter in an ordinary home shop, um, the budget method for grinding a tungsten carbide cutter like a little broken three millimeter tungsten carbide cutter into a special shaped little cutter that allows you to drill out a broken tap. Well, it works so well. This is the shape of, and I'll go into the shape in more detail later in this video. It works so well that I want to try now drilling a hardened, glass hard, high quality four millimeter thick file. So I'm going to set this up in the vise and I'm going to use the same method to see if I can machine a hole right through that hardened file. And my gut feeling is that a file is slightly harder than a tap because the tap has to be tough but a file is high carbon steel and a tap is high speed steel. So it'll be a challenge but let's see if I can do it. So that's right through about 500 RPM with a shop ground tungsten carbide D-bit. You can see I'm right through there now. And um, I went down about two millimeters and it started to get a bit feeling like it was a bit blunt, sort of taking a bit more force. And so I took it out and altered the uh, clearance angles on the cutter and sharpened it and then went back in and it seemed a bit better and it went right through to get right through. Going down about half a mil at a time, brushing out the chip, supplying new cutting oil and uh, going down another half a millimeter so that's right through A good quality high carbon file. Now I'm sure that 
an ordinary end mill wouldn't do that. It just took too much force. Um, I, co I could sacrifice an end mill and show you it shattering, but I don't like doing that. They're expensive here in New Zealand. Every time I do that, it's another $20 or $30, and I'm 99% sure it just wouldn't do it. Of course, the advantage of a debit over a standard end mill is that it's much shorter. You only need to project it out the minimum because you're not gripping over the uh, flute teeth. You can grip it on the parallel shank diameter right down to the almost the end. I'm only sticking out um, four or five millimeters. Initially only about three millimeters and then I extended it out to five millimeters. Now that allows you to have a much stiffer, stronger cutter supported by the little ER20 collet chuck and an end mill, you can't do that because it projects out, you know, 10, 15, 20 millimeters. If you push it into the chuck, it's not supported in the same way because the flute is being gripped by the collet. Um, that's not secure and it would wreck the collet if it grabbed and broke potentially. So there's big advantages in having a solid D-bit with a very short D ground on the end. The other advantage is that you can sharpen it very easily when you feel it getting a little blunt. You just pull it out, sharpen it up, put it back in and carry on through. I probably could have gone right through with this latest geometry but even if I couldn't it was only one sharpening and the whole thing if I did it again now, would take five, ten minutes to cut right through four millimeter thick glass hard file. So this is a really brilliant system. I'll show you now um, the technique for advancing it really gradually with maximum rigidity because that's part of it. If you just came down with the cutter and a drill chuck using the quill, you probably would fail. Um, it's only because I used a certain technique that I'm able to actually keep the load light on the cutter. Let me show you that now. Okay, so to get a gentle feel, let me show you. So I got the cutter just above the top surface of the file by using a bit of paper and resetting the dial on zero on about 500 RPM, holding the knee hand wheel came in really steadily so it's very rigid and went down about that speed half a millimeter you can hear it cutting and backed off don't let it rub and then brushed out the chips put in some more cutting oil came down quite quickly reset the the knee hand wheel to the optimum position back into it again steady cutting down we're now down one millimeter deep back off reposition the hand wheel come down to one millimeter deep back into it again really steady gently we're now down one and a half millimeters deep back off so we're not rubbing we're cutting very light cuts and everything's rigid we're bringing the knee up the quills locked the cutter has very little projection and it's held in a collet chuck. Okay, so I've just machined a three millimeter hole through a hardened file. This is a really good quality Barco file and it's quite a, a neat fit on a three millimeter drill. So let's um, go through some of the details to help you guys when you have to machine harden steel and also it'll be uh, documenting it for myself for when I get even older and I need to machine some hardened steel I can re-watch this video. So we've used a old carbide end mill, a three millimeter end mill, you know just a broken one and we've ground it by hand on an offhand bench grinder that I show the setup of how to set it all up in a recent video called uh, Removing Broken Taps. There's two videos there. Have a look at those videos. They'll give us some context and some background how you can make a little cutter and uh, machine out a broken tap. 
like a four millimeter tap uh, with a three millimeter cutter. And we're going to machine up a D bit, or I have machined up a D bit. This is it here. And I'm going to go through the shape on the end now. It's also in the video on uh, grinding the cutter for machining the broken tap. But I've got some further refinements that will make the uh, machining job even more successful. I found out a little bit more as I've been machining the file. I think the file is even harder than a tap because a tap has to be a little bit tough. Um, carbide can machine it more easily than a file that is absolutely glass hard, you know, well into the 60s Rockwell C. So we talked about this in the machining out the broken tap video that this length has to be a minimum and you need a nice smooth parallel diameter here that you can grip in the collet and project the absolute minimum out of the chuck so that it's very stiff and it's held in the collet by its diameter that you can't get that obviously with an end mill because you've got flutes in the way and that stops you from holding it rigidly. It also supports the cutter as it gets deeper in the hole by it rubbing on this diameter. So some of the shapes that we want to achieve is we want to split it exactly in half. Now this can be done by hand and a little grinder, a little diamond grinder. Split it in half. We want to grind a very small amount of clearance back from that 90 degree edge there. So, so we start 90 degrees and we just have a few degrees, you know, like three degrees clearance there. I found it's better to have clearance here as well. Just coming up to that edge, clearance there, backed off around the circumference. And we're also backing off with an angle grind up to the middle there. Seems to be good enough to do that by hand, just visually to the middle. The, the important thing is I've found that a 45 degree chamfer there, very small, um, gives the cutter a lot more durability. See if I can show you up close here. Such a tiny little thing. I don't know how successful this will be. I can't really see it, but this is the cutter that's just done the job. I think you can almost see the light shining on the cutting edge there. It's, it's a little bit dull, but it's done it. It's cut through a four millimeter tap. And this can be ground by hand. I mean, if you have a D-bit grinder, it's easier. But it can be done by hand. And you can machine hardened steel, glass hard steel. And we could probably use this like a milling cutter and machine a little square or flat surface as well. But I'm just using it here to produce a hole through that file. So that's some of the information. You're running at about 500 RPM. You grip tight on the diameter. Initially only about 3 millimeters projection and then project it down about 5 millimeters. A very gentle feed by bringing the knee up. The quill's locked. Everything's rigid. Cutting oil. Very gentle, steady feed. Don't let it rub. I've been experimenting with ways that this can be done on a budget for the small shop and this is my setup here. Um, I outlined it in detail on a recent video how to remove small broken taps and the video with the how on the thumbnail goes into those details. So it's just a little $50 bench grinder with a little um, $20, this is US dollars, diamond grinding wheel. Set that up on there. Um, all pretty simple tools that are very useful for multiple jobs and I go into how you can grind your little tungsten carbide cutters, your old blunt and broken tungsten carbide cutters and make very special stiff rigid cutters that you can use to drill out taps and cut through hardened steel um, but also you can grind tooling for your lathe and your milling machine with the same setup. Have a look at that video for the details um, I may make a dedicated video on this subject because I think it will have a lot of appeal for small shops. 
Well, thanks for watching that right through, guys. I hope you found something useful there. If you did, please like and subscribe if you're not already. Keep an eye out. I'll be doing more of these videos. Um, have a look at the introduction to this video channel, Thread Express, if you want to find a way to uh, support me at some stage in the future. With this work that I'm do, doing more and more as sort of for the love of it, but I appreciate any support that you have available. Cheers.